good morning everyone. Welcome to our devotion today. Uh, we're going to continue where we left off last time, looking at this whole theme of being trained in godliness, uh, the fear of God, the overwhelming comprehension of the love of God, the deep desire for the presence and fellowship of God, which is the definition that we have been using. And now scripture was taken from 1 Timothy 7, uh, sorry, 1 Timothy 4, Verse 7, have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. And so when Paul uses those words, train yourself to be godly, he, he really is borrowing a term from the realm of athletics, the training required for participation in the games of the day. And in this passage, there are a number of principles of, for, for training. First of all, there's personal responsibility. Train yourself. Uh, we are reminded uh, of what Paul said in Philippians 2.12, to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. He was really referring to godliness, sanctification, becoming more like Christ. Timothy was personally responsible for his progress in godliness. He couldn't just relax and trust God for that godliness in the same way he knew that he couldn't make it happen himself without God's enablement. And as I've said so many times before, we can be very industrious in our business, our studies, our home, and even in our church, but be complacent when it comes to really giving time and attention to our personal spiritual disciplines. We would far rather pray, if we're honest, Lord, make me godly, or Lord, grant me patience, but hurry. You know, that, that poster that we often used to see up on walls. And then we'd far rather do that than just work on it. We somehow expect God just to kind of shower us with godliness and patience and some of the other fruit of the Spirit that we read about. And so personal responsibility is the first thing that we want to highlight. So the second principle is what simply I would call personal requirements. And so elsewhere uh, in this, this book, Paul exhorts Timothy to grow in his ministry. And here he encourages him to grow in his devotion to God. Even, the, even though he was well qualified, experienced as a minister, he still needed to grow in the essential uh, areas of godliness. One of the, the shortest uh, stories in Scripture is about Enoch. He ministered in a day of gross ungodliness. And the parting tribute paid to him in Scripture is simply, he walked with God. Are we training ourselves in Christian activity or Christian integrity? In other words, are we training ourselves in godliness? And so if we come back to this whole athletic arena, what are some of the requirements that every athlete needs to heed if they really are to remain competitive and win the race? Well, the first uh, attitude or requirement is commitment. No one makes it to the top level in any sport without total commitment to rigorous and daily training. The concept of commitment occurs repeatedly through the Bible. It's found in David's cry to God, earnestly I seek you. It's found in God's promise to his people in Babylon. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. Or the writer to the Hebrews in Hebrews 12, 14. Make every effort to be holy. Godliness doesn't come cheaply. It demands the cost of commitment, friends. And in verse 10, Paul says it is something for which we must labor and strive. The word strive means to literally agonize, reaching for that winning tape. We should have to really work at it to get there. And so if so many athletes are willing to make that kind of commitment for a crown that won't last, how much more shouldn't we be willing to make that commitment for a crown that the scripture says will last into eternity, that has value for all things, both in the present and in the life to come? And so that, that first requirement is commitment. The second requirement is teachability. A willingness to learn under a tutor or a teacher. No athlete, regardless of his or her ability, 
will make it to the Olympics without a coach, with someone from whom they can learn. So a dedicated coach will, will spend a lot of time trying to, to hone those skills, to, to iron out any faults, any, any weaknesses, so that the athlete can, can excel. And yet the athlete has to be teachable in order to learn. And of course, being a disciple is just that, being a learner. The third requirement is practice. And we, we know that only true too well. It is practice that applies the teaching of the coach. Through practice, that skill is developed and one becomes more and more uh, competitive. There's no shortcut to Olympic glory, just as there's no shortcut to godliness. Discipleship is applying what we have learned. And that's why I always say to folk, the best place to, to do that is, is to begin in a, in a life group, to be in community where you can hold each other accountable for that discipleship. Then fourthly, study. And we've spoken much about this. So I just want to mention it, spending time in God's word. In other words, that, that 12 inch journey that I spoke uh, a little while ago, you know, um, from, from the head to the heart. And we said that you know, we spoke about God's word in your, in your hand. And we spoke about basically the H being to, to hear the E to examine, the A to analyze, the R to remember, and then the T to, to think, in other words, to meditate. And so we need to spend time in God's Word doing that. And so, friends, godliness is, is not an, an option. It's a command. Uh, God said, be holy as I am holy. Throughout history, there have been godly men and women whose lives have measured up to their words. Peter and John, for example, in Acts 4.13. Martin Luther, who stood before a tribunal at the Council of Worms, challenged to recant his beliefs. And remember how he answered, My conscience is captive to the word of God. I will not recant anything. For to go against conscience is neither honest nor safe. Here I stand, I cannot do otherwise. So God help me. Amen. And so we have so many other examples of those who strived for godliness in their lives. Eric Little was a man who knew what was in his heart and allowed it to, to flow from his lips. Remember that scripture out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. He was a member of the 1924 British Olympic team for the Games in Paris. And he was all set to run the 100 meters but found out that the race was to be run on a Sunday. And so, because of his convictions, he refused to compete. An intense pressure was brought upon him, even from the Prince of Wales, who tried to change his mind. But he stood firm on his convictions, despite being the, the world record holder for the 100 meters, and favored, of course, to win gold. And he opted to run the 400 meters, which really wasn't his distance. And as we know, for those of us who've watched Chariots of Fire, we will know that he won gold. Such was the impact of his godly life. The movie Chariots of Fire was in fact made to celebrate it. And tragically he died in a Japanese prison of war camp at the age of 43. And yet a leading Scottish newspaper wrote those words. Scotland has lost a son who did her proud every hour of his life. Friends, what an epitaph. Imagine if that could be written on our tombstone, that we live for God every hour of our life. And that's what Eric Little did. And he, 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 he stood by his convictions. He was a godly man. And he trained in godliness as much as he trained for the Olympics. And so my prayer is that we will take these words uh, to heart, that the, the words from Paul to Timothy, then that we will train in godliness and, and apply those disciplines that will enable us to become more and more like Jesus. And so let's bow in a moment of prayer. Lord, we just thank you for your word again and thank you again for this exhortation <coughs> to, to really grow in our walk with you, to be trained in godliness, to be holy as you are holy. Lord, we know that 
There are no quick fixes. There are no shortcuts to godliness. It's not something we can simply pray, Lord, make me godly. That, Lord, it demands sacrifice and commitment. It demands time and discipline. As we spend time in your word, as we spend time uh, just praying and drawing near to you, and spend time in community with others and being held accountable. In other words, as we spend time becoming your disciples. And so we just pray, Lord God, that you would teach us these things, that we would be teachable, that we would learn from you, our great teacher. And so bless us as we go into this day and continue to grow us in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, bless you. We'll see you again on Friday. God bless.